began to think his thoughts through your thoughts and you are unaware. You will never know what temptation is until you begin to engage prayer. Then you will find out how porous you are. You, you are just trying to pray. Then you remember Satan takes your mind to a time when you stole. Hallelujah. And the moment he does that, what he does is that he deflates your faith and then there is now a hole in your armor. Your greatest temptations and distractions will come when you set your heart to pray. Uh, that's why Jesus is teaching us you will need to learn the skill of closing the door. Now, let me, let me teach you how to close the door. Pastor Fred, count from 1 to 10 in your mind. Have you started? What's your name? Where did you stop counting? Pastor Fred stopped counting at 4. You know why? They, they, there is more authority in your speaking than in your thinking. If you want to speak, you will stop thinking. If the devil wants to interfere, are you there? If he wants to distract your prayer, he uses your thoughts. So what you do is that you begin to speak. That's how you shut the door from influences, spiritual influences that want to take advantage of your adventure. You shut the door by what? Speaking. So the moment you begin to hear yogurt in the fridge, then you take a scripture and say it to yourself and hear it. If you say it two times to yourself and you hear it, that spirit that is transmitting, his network will shut down. Jesus says, shut the door. Because prayer is warfare. He knows that if you can engage God, you can tip the scales. So he doesn't want you to enjoy that adventure without interference. And so Jesus said, you need to do what? And it is your door. It is idiosyncratic to you. It is specific to you. It is particular to you. Your skill of shutting the door will determine if you can secure audience from God. The flesh is noisy. Your soul is noisy. Satan wants to beat drums in your soul. The drama of the soul. And he wants to crystallize a certain form of haste within your soul. Do you know that haste? You have time for everything. You have time for movies. You have time for gossip. But when you come into the presence of God, there seems to be a haste inside it's an orchestration of, of satan and he's taking advantage of the redeem of the flesh because the flesh can enjoy everything except prayer so he puts the flesh on notice that you are about to go on an adventure you are going to be ignored so the flesh begins to make noise inside it, it, it sounds like haste and if you don't know the drill on how to shut the door the flesh will win Please help me tell your neighbor, shut the door. For many of us in this place, your door has been too open. And you receive vibes from every quarter. The moment you engage, you are sound when you are not praying. Your brain is balanced. You can think very constructive thoughts outside of prayer. But when you want to engage, suddenly there is a marketplace. Activities are going on. You are trying to shut it down. And no, what you do is speak. And then you bring tranquility, just like Jesus spoke. And he said, peace, be still. And everything arranged and came into alignment. You have the authority to shut the door by speaking. When you do that, then you will be situated within your closet. The reason why there's a recommendation for closet dealings. Oh my, are you there? You are not there. There is a recommendation for closet dealings is because of the nature of our father. The Bible says our, the first definition of our father is that our father is in secret. So it would take an activity that is domiciled in secret to engage the God that is in secret. You must know what it means to exercise your spirit. Exercising your spirit doesn't necessarily mean noise. If the noise you are making as prayer is not a product of the rhythm that is captured from inside, what you are doing is noise. You are not engaging because you do not know that the person you are trying to engage is in secret. You think he's in the market. 
Oh, you are not with me. What I'm trying to do is to recalibrate you. So that if you begin to pray right, you will, the hand of God will move everywhere. One year, your life would have changed so many times, you will not even be able to recognize yourself. One of the missing things in the body of Christ is the, is the knowledge of prayer. There's a knowledge that backs it up. If you are going to gain rank in your service delivery in terms of prayer, you need knowledge. It was not every time Jesus shouted. He shouted sometimes. But you see, the shout came from within him. He was expressing what was happening within him. Sometimes the Holy Ghost is gentle, is quiet inside. That's how your prayer should be that day. Oh my God, you are not with me. The rhythm of your outward delivery is supposed to be consistent with the rhythm of his sitting, his movement within your vessel. That means you have understood him that dwells in secret. If you don't know how to find his rhythm, there are many times you will pray and miss him. Because you don't know that he's in secret. You see, in view of the fact, are you there with me? In view of the fact that he is in secret, you can only sense him through your receptacle. And your receptacle happens to be the organ that houses your spiritual senses. If that organ is not in adequate operation, you are not likely to engage, encounter the one in secret. Because when he wants to register his feedback, it will come in form of impressions, impressions that are furnished upon your receptacle. You are not with me. Your receptacle is the organ that houses your spiritual senses. Come with me quickly. Come with me. We need to deal with number one. Our father is a God that is, that dwells in secret. First, that's the first one. Hello. 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 Share and like our videos.